Hi there, and welcome to Strange Times Poetry Broadcast. I'm coming to you live from the Poetry Bookshelf to read you three uplifting poems. If you haven't seen us before, please like po Strange Times Poetry Broadcast on Facebook so that you'll know each time a new episode is coming out and on any other important announcements. In the meantime, I'm going to be reading to you three poems and the theme is islands. Sometimes you can get a little stuck on an island, but I think normally an island is a peaceful place. It's an image of peace, of, of calm and quiet away from the hustle and bustle. At least that's how I feel about it and who we are going to have with us on that island as well. And even right now, I think, especially because we are so separated and socially distanced, we're a little bit on our own islands. And that can be a hell of not able to leave, but that can also be a place of solace. And I think it just depends on the day and the moment. So these three poems I hope will take you to a peaceful island. So the first poem is from The Spectacular Difference. Uh, it's translations of Zelda, Zelda's poems by Marsha Fox. Uh, Zelda was an Israeli poet and a modernist writer, and her poems are stunning. This one is called Each Rose. Each rose is an island of the promised peace, the eternal peace. In each rose dwells a sapphire bird whose name is They Shall Beat Their Swords. And the light of the rose seems so near, and its fragrance so near, and the silence of the leaves so near, that island so near, take a boat and cross the sea of fire. I just love the, the last the end of that, take a boat and cross the sea of fire. It's so mysterious and yet inviting. Yeah, that feeling of being so near but not quite, I feel like that's a lot of this time right now. So near to, so near to the answers, to figuring out how we're all going to get through this, and it's just a little bit up ahead. Come across the sea of fire. I think, I think we can make it there. Now I'm just dropping things. All right, my next poem is by Sherry Kaplan. And I know Sherry through the Mass Poetry World, through UMass Boston, and Sherry's work is lovely. The poem that I chose is called How Do I Love Thee? And it's referring to... Um, to a poem by, oh my goodness, by Elizabeth Browning, I think. Uh, and she's saying, how, how do I love thee? Let me count the ways. And in this poem, Sherry 100% counts the ways. This, there's actually two parts to this poem, How Do I Love Thee and How Doth Thou Love Me. I'm just going to read the first part. The whole poem appears on Drunk Monkeys, and you should definitely check it out because it's beautiful. How do I love thee? For instance, for Scythia catch April on fire, and this is when babies learn the color yellow and adolescent girls carry their new chest like metals momentarily. By May, the fuss has diffused and branches shiver without flower, while dumb daffodils gab and lilacs diva the garden. Two, as the number five dotes on ten, thinking she'd like to be twice as much, but then, but then again, why does he carry a whole circle of empty? Three, as a shopaholic loves the internet, invisible box where secrets can snivel, rubbing their hands together and meeting others with the same problem. Is it buying new crave or returning? Four, like an object loves gravity. Five, when the particular becomes the theoretical, stings stop winging open and the wound settles, you become memory. However, upon an overheard conversation about said particular, the theoretical re-enters the room. Many hypotheses spring about my mind like loose toys. Six, the same is true when a hand is mistaken for your hand. I am caught with my pocket watches open and all of their faces are your face. Seven. My dad says tinsel was once made of glass, which attracted but pricked him as a child. This is how I love you, as one is drawn to fabric 
cheer, only to nurse a blood-dotted hand. I sulk but stare at the twinkling weapon, each year the shroud. 8. What does the daydream think of the dreamer? My love for you is one of these two. 9. As a dog loves his own shit smelling of the past. 10. Like an abandoned home, you would never know by looking at me that scaffolding was left unfinished, that a lone poster was not hung, but greens in the corner with a tack in its back, that the plans are still papering the floor, and while there is no door, you can always find your way in. I just love how many places this poem goes. This sounds like a difficult love, a love that, um, as it says, one is drawn to fabricated cheer only to nurse a blood-dotted hand. Not necessarily the best, but then, and then there's just these glimmering moments of joy as a dog loves his own shit, like an object loves gravity. The simplicity of those, and they kind of knock you in the face. This poem, just in the love and the figuring out of the love, takes me so many places, and there's so much joy in each of these images, in, in the discovery of them. I really enjoyed this one. So thanks, Sherry. All right, and the last poem I'm going to read is called Broken Axis. It is by myself. And I don't write a lot of love poems, but I do write a lot of anti-romance poems, kind of what a relationship is really like and all the complexities there. And I think underlying an anti-romance poem is that there is romance. It just lies in, in the opposite, in the complexity and because with, com with, with complexity, I think, comes a type of knowing. And in this poem, there's knowing, and there's also attempts to keep going, to start again. And I think that's where, that's where the love lies. If, if I'm stuck on an island, the one person I want to be there with is my love. Broken axes. After years apart, I'm afraid of my wife here every day, peering inside cabinets, opening me with her slim fingers. There are some questions I'm simply not deep enough or wide enough to answer. When she leaves her work, I return to the smell of myself on the old sheets, scrape last night's congealed Brussels sprouts from a tight-lidded pan. Let's go, I'd tell her. Let's go to the museum like Frank O'Hara and kiss in the Chinese garden. Once I saw a calligraph poem there, hung untranslated, poems titled Broken Axes, letters ragged, inking from the page. Broken by the blade or by the stem, forever or until replaced. In our apartment, a pile of things to replace. The milk frother won't froth. The French press arrived in six jagged pieces. I ride across the city, a ding dinged knife balanced on my lap. So for me, the ding knife at the end, balanced on my lap, it's both a type of impotence and, and, and difficulty and challenge, all those broken things, and is this a broken thing? But at the same time, I think there's, it's, it's being carried tenderly, it's being, it's, it's in movement, it's not discarded. And I think all of our love, in a way, is a broken thing because it's not perfect. But we're also, but we also carry it dearly. I hope that these poems brought you off to somewhere different, an island of peace. And I hope to see you soon. In the meantime, stay safe, stay sane, and good night. Bye!